There was a beautiful 2003 zinc yellow Terminator Cobra for sale in the northern part of the state and I had my eye on the car for quite some time. The car was for sale on and off for a year or two. It was a really nice car and so they were asking a lot of money for it but ultimately the reason it wasn't selling was because it was zinc yellow and because it was so expensive. It only had 7,000 miles on it. The interior of the car was of course really nice. It had very low miles on it. It had the graphite inserts on the seats. These are some of the pictures of what it looks like inside and how nice it was. Of course it was a car that was owned by an older gentleman and he didn't do a lot with it. It sat a lot. And when I talked to him, he said he was the second owner of the car. And so, here are some of the pictures of how nice it was inside. It was uh, all stock interior, no gauges, nothing like that. The car had the machined wheels on it, which I like the wheels. They're my favorite. Of course, they're, the Terminator wheels are the only wheels that I really want on a Terminator. I like the chrome ones better, but the machined wheels look good, especially on zinc yellow with the graphite interior. But it's not my favorite, so that was not exactly what I was looking for there. But I was looking for another Terminator, and I wanted a few things with this car. I wanted it to be low miles. I had narrowed it down between zinc yellow, white, and torch red. Torch red was my first choice, then zinc yellow, then white, Oxford white. And I really like those colors. I wanted to add those to my collection since I have competition orange already. And this car was absolutely beautiful. It had everything that I would want for it. The price, like I said, was a little high. They were asking $25, $27 for it, which I know for the miles is good. But there were a couple of things that eventually steered me away from buying this particular car. Now, I was looking for a either completely bone stock Terminator, which is what this is, just like my orange one, one that had never been pulled, never tuned, never had anything messed with it engine-wise, or one that was modified but had dyno charts and was proven to be a healthy, clean, strong engine without any problems. So this car fit into the category of bone stock, never molested, never run lean, none of those problems because it was so nice. But there was one problem with this engine that didn't fit my per personal preference and criteria and that was the engine build date. Now if you recall from my video on the Horsepower TV episode of the O3 Cobra, they talk about how the cylinder heads had some issues in the early model runs. A lot of the earlier production engines had a head tick that developed, they had to revise the cylinder head, they had overheating issues with them, the spark plug thread number was four per spark plug instead of nine which is what they did later to help the spark plug from being shot out if it was loose. The four thread heads aren't necessarily bad but you're just not as protected as if you had nine threads holding the spark plug in place and so there was a TSB put out and if you had the head tick then it had to be replaced at the dealership and uh, you could look at the valve cover on the driver's side where he's pointing there on the side of the head there's a, a stickered barcode and it says what the engine build date was. The heads that were revised first had this blue paint on them whether they were there from the factory or whether you had the recall done and the dealership had to replace the whole cylinder head and I didn't want to get involved in any of this. If this yellow car had such low miles, it hadn't developed a head tick yet, and it's uh, probably way too old for the dealership to address it. They might not even have the parts anymore in their inventory. And so for me, I didn't want to uh, get a car that had an early, early engine build date. And they said that the engines built before November 2002 were prone to this. So I had the owner go look at the valve cover and look at the sticker and tell me. And he went back and looked at it and said that the valve cover sticker said that the engine was built in September of 2002. So this engine potentially could develop a head tick and you'd be out without any type of recall. And it was just something I didn't want to get involved with. Now, there's no guarantee that this engine would have had the tick, but I just didn't want an early engine build date with the older heads on it like that. And as a matter of fact, 
My 10th anniversary 03 Cobra, even though it was an 03, was built at the very end of the 03 model year. They ran the 2003 10th anniversary cars through last, and so it actually received the better DC casting 9-thread cylinder heads that were revised. So that's another reason I was happy with my purchase. But another nail in the coffin for this car against me buying it was the freaking hitty odorous front grille that the first owner or second owner had put on this car. Now in these pictures you can see there's no grille on it. But look closely and this is how I know this is the same car. You can see that there are plugs now installed in the holes where the grille used to go. The car had the most ugly grill I've ever seen and I can't believe somebody would put one on there. My friend's Cobra had the same one. This is what it looked like. And so the only way to put that grill on is to drill three holes on the car and it looked terrible and I asked the first owner if they were drilled in there and he said yes and so that was kind of the final thing for me for not buying this car because I didn't want to have to buy a car and then do paint work on it and fill the holes and you'd always see where they used to be all that kind of stuff. And so the owner ended up selling it to the dealership where it's for sale right now on eBay and these are the pictures that are from the dealership so I know it's the same car. The car comes with some nice documentation like this SVT certificate and even on here you can tell that according to the vehicle's build date it was built on October 4th 2002 which would verify that this is the car I called on and that the engine was built in September Obviously, if the car is built in October, the engine would be a little bit earlier than that. And the whole car and engine were both produced before November 2002. Now, I'm not saying that if you have a Cobra that was built then, that it's a bad car. I'm just saying, for my personal preference, if I'm going to spend this kind of money on a car, I want to make sure that it has the updated cylinder heads, that it's the right color, the right wheel package, all those things. Now, I did like this car because I know it's hard to find them with this low mileage. And I did make a cash offer to this person. Um, it was pretty low because of my criteria and what I didn't like about the car. It was what I was comfortable paying for the car with those things. And so I ended up buying my Torch Red 10th Anniversary, which is what I really wanted. But anyway, this is a nice car. All of these documentations like the owner's manuals, the window sticker, the SVT thing, and, and some other things. Now, it doesn't have the plastic on the seats and all the things that would be nice if it came with the car, all the stuff that was original to the car like that, the original battery, original oil filter, uh, original tires, all those things that are quite collectible later on. Um, so this is more like a car that somebody bought and enjoyed for a little while, sold it, the other person didn't drive it a lot, um, and that's just what it was. It wasn't something that somebody was collecting and, and preserving in a even better ways. It has been very nicely preserved. It's a beautiful car, just not exactly what I was looking for. Now looking at the window sticker, I think that's really interesting because it does give me a little more insight on this car because I wondered where the car was from originally. So like I said, the car was from northern Utah, but it looks like according to the window sticker, if you look down in the bottom left corner, it says sold to and it has the dealership and says it's from Indiana. And the car was here in Utah, it was purchased by this dealership so they could flip it, I'm sure they got it for a good deal, and now the car is all the way back in North Carolina. It's a really nice car, here's the information if anybody who watches this video ends up buying the car, or if somebody buys the car and comes across this video, you'll know if this is your car or not. But speaking of the dealership, I hate when they put their crud on the car, their stickers, their things like this, so I wish they wouldn't have done that. It, sometimes it'll leave a mark. A lot of times it'll leave some kind of a shadow there that you might not see in plain daylight, but if you get under the wrong light, fluorescent lighting, garage lighting, gas station lights, you'll see it. I love how the dealership says the car is virtually flawless, which basically it is, but the funny thing here is they, they say it's finished in jaw-dropping zinc yellow. So for all those people who don't like zinc yellow, this dealership says it's jaw-dropping and that it's wonderful and you know I like zinc yellow I almost bought it I have the zinc yellow Mach 1 so for all you that don't like zinc yellow this dealership says it's jaw-dropping and I have to agree it's a wonderful color so thanks for watching the video here's a story about a zinc yellow Terminator that I almost bought started in Indiana went to Utah over to North Carolina all over the place with only 7,000 miles on it 
Beautiful car, not exactly what I wanted, but I would have been happy with this car if I did purchase it. So thanks for watching the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're not already on here with all of us. And give it a thumbs up if you liked it. It'll recommend it for other people to enjoy. And stay tuned for more of these videos.